Hey everybody, welcome back to another Stoneface Reactions. I'm Griffin, that's Theta, and we're here to watch some Raze Fawn. We'd like to go ahead and take a moment to thank Arlo Savant again for go ahead and sponsoring this over on the Patreon. Thanks, man. We're having a lot of fun being completely confused. Or at least, I am. Well, I'll say, uh, right up front here, I don't really remember the specifics of every episode going forwards. I, re I remember the overall plot, who the characters are, that sort of thing. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to remember character names, but I remember who they are and what they do in the story. And I remember not the they... vibe of it all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm basically like uh, somebody who did a book report t 10 years ago, and I remember <laughs> what the book report was about, but I don't remember anything past the front page and the last page. Well, hopefully, we'll go ahead and get that memory going together, and maybe you'll be surprised. Uh, but we do have a comment here today by Phil Fisher, who says at 049, uh, we misread that. Uh, I wrote SRW, not SFR. SRW is an abbreviation for Super Robot Wars. I was talking about the Raze Fawn and Gundam 00 have never appeared together in a Super Robot Wars game. Uh, at 108, yes, it was about that theory. A lot of Gundams have been moving away from being somewhat realistic for decades now. Even Tomino, once the other mechas uh, shows he's working on, uh, including several super robots, to be acknowledged to exist in the same universe as Turn A Gundam. The idea was scrapped, but there's still a minor reference to a super robot show Tomino worked on, in the form of a statue resembling a stone cliff face from Brave Raiden in Turn A Gundam. Uh, not a spoiler, because that's from the first episode. I've mentioned Raiden before in my comment in episode 2 of your Raze Fawn reactions that is one of uh, Raze Fawn's inspirations. I think Wing and IBO might have also given you the impression that the mechs in Gundam don't go over the top, but there are several timelines where that's not true. Although, clothes clues cl strike again. So, what do you think of all that, Theta? Well, I mean, it would be hard for uh, the Raze Fawn to up here, anywhere in a Gundam 00 thing. The Ra Zaphon's like 50 meters tall. Anything in Gundam 00 <laughs> is like 18 meters tall. Uh, size scales are a hell of a drug. Well, uh, I mean, they but... fuck with it all the time in uh, Godzilla mm -hmm. and uh, King Kong, right? Like, now King Kong's as tall as buildings, right? But you remember, before, he was maybe like four stories tall at best. Yeah, it had to climb up different things. Whereas Godzilla was always as tall as buildings. So I'm I'm thinking like visual inspiration because now that I think about it, like when you head to like Gundam Wing Endless Waltz, like and they do the redesigns, like uh the gut uh zero the zero Gundam ends up having like those huge like angel wings. And it basically looks like the very first shot that we get in the intro here for Razephon. It is basically exactly that, and then it unfurls. Well, actually, it's like episode two or three that you get the uh, the wings on Ross Afon. But yeah, also yeah. episode one, Gundam 00, is where we get the, the red angel wings. Or I guess they were white wings. Mm. Sort of. They're GN particles, but they got the effect. Yeah, we, we have a lot of uh, cross-contamination for visual design, which, you know, checks out, really. It's Gundam. Of course, they're going to go ahead and have the same artist. Well, they don't have the same artists. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why I think I said multiple times in some recordings. I think it was probably Gundam 00 ones, but how I feel like we got spoiled on Witch from Mercury, that we had four different mech designers, and then we go back to, like, 00, which has one, which is why every mech feels the same. It's like, uh, when I'm doing, like, the 00F manga stuff, I always say, I have no idea until someone in the show says what mech they're in, which one I'm looking at. Unless they have a very specific thing. They they do have at least some different features. They do have occasionally different silhouettes. But yeah, no, uh, I, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, you're, it makes... you're looking for more visual distinction. Well, it makes sense in certain ways. In other ways, like Gundam 00, mm -hmm. they're all made by the same team, basically. So they had, like, one specific design that they worked with. Whereas, like, Gundam Wing... You had different scientists in different places, which is why all the wing uh, Gundams look different. Or, yeah. um, which from Mercury, they're made by different corporations with different aspirations and designs, so they all look different. Although, they look similar to each corporation's 
own design. So when you yeah. get multiple suits from the same mm-hmm. company, they bear resemblance. I appreciate yeah. that sort of in-universe explanation for it. But from a outside meta thing, it's very confusing when everything looks the same. Yeah, that's understandable. Uh, and as far as, like, uh, Gundam being realistic and, like, trying to ship towards more super robot, I can kind of uh, understand that. I-, I think Gundam's conflicts are realistic. Like, they try to keep it, like, grounded in, like, people who are there being affected and they have rational reasons for the things that they're doing or things that, like, line up with what you expect people in the real world world to be doing, you know? Uh, so I think that ends up translating to, like, when you see the giant robots moving around, you go, it's like, of course, the next step was to pull out the giant robots. And whether or not those robots have superpowers or, like, they have to have tank controls uh, isn't quite so important to the story of Gundam, I think. So I'm down for it. If there's more super robots, I'm still down for Gundam. Well, Gundam itself is unrealistic, as described by the creator of Gundam itself, Tomino. Yeah. Um, uh, specifically coming to mind is the plaque at uh, Gundam HQ uh, nearby the giant life-sized Gundam where yep. he uh, apologizes for the fact that it can't walk around uh, because yeah, It's apparently... basically a giant puppet, right? Yeah, well it's it's like back to a thing, right? So it's being mm-hmm. uh, but um, yeah, no, he explains how they had a, like a whole crew and everything trying to figure out how to how to make it walk and everything. And uh, there's another interview that he actually does at some point where he talks about the fact that the Gundams were designed to like fight in space or something like that, which yeah. is why a bunch of, he was upset when a bunch of his space designs wound up being primarily featured on earth. Yeah. Cause it's like <laughs> entirely not like how it's realistically work. So I feel like Gundam has fallen to the whole Star Trek motif where it was supposed to be based in scientific stuff, but then we started breaking out with the engineering speak. It just, you know, rule of cool it instead of... At some point, we've reversed the polarity so many times, we don't know where we are anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, where you start working on the uh, the internal logic of the show, rather than mm-hmm. the actual logic of the universe. Meanwhile, over in Doctor Hugh, they they just don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> oh, love me some Doctor Hugh. Yeah, the Doctor Hugh, my my favorite from uh, Germany. Oh <laughs> uh, no, I was going to combine it back with Star Trek Hugh from Star Trek that uh, Borg that gained uh, independence, where he I guess assimilated the uh, Doctor's uh, TARDIS. Hey. Hey, there's, like, a whole, like, side story right there. Why didn't we get that as, like, a side series instead of Picard? Doctor Who has uh, crossed over with Star Trek before. It's a comic. It's an <laughs> official released comic. Yeah, so let's get let's get more of that. Uh, Star Trek has also crossed over with the X-Men. But do you know what we're here for today? We're here for some Razathon. Uh, So let's go ahead and see if I can remember what even happened last time. That's your only source of information. You're not allowed to look anything up. (laughs) Yep, I only have my documented memory of Doctor Who to work with here. I I think you mean Doctor (laughs) Hugh. Yeah, Doctor Hugh. Yeah, now I want to make it a mode out of that. (laughs) Just something Uh. that looks off-brand Doctor Who. Which would be hard to do, because everything kind of looks off-brand Doctor Who. Yeah, Doctor Who is off-brand Doctor Who itself, honestly. But for Razapon, last time I remember, uh, we had an everything start to freeze over. Uh, we had a beach episode interrupted by a bunch of snow and a bunch of Christmas, which is going to happen. Uh, the Doctor gave someone uh, a piece of an alien, uh, one of the dolums, I believe. Uh, and that started to crystallize. And take over that individual, apparently with some sort of level of negative emotions involved. Uh, they began freezing everything and popped out of nowhere with another doldum. Uh, that was defeated. Uh, they were saved not only from uh, uh, from being frozen to death in their doldum, but also uh, from all their negative emotions, too, in some way. I wish I could uh, <laughs> pop up that... Uh... God, what was the the Hulk Hogan movie where he's a space mercenary? Anyway, Christopher Lloyd's I was frozen today. Oh gosh, yes, exactly. 
Only one way to beat it. Antifreeze. Oh, yeah, just chug that down. It's very healthy for you. What he you. does in the movie, it's funny. Oh, gosh. <laughs> good things to teach kids, right? Absolutely. It's sweet, right? But, it must be good. So that's the general shape of things. I think in more specifics, we got a lot of backstory with a couple of people about uh, exchanging Christmas gifts and, like, giving gloves mm -hmm. to people and, like, how some uh, a pair of characters uh, felt inadequate compared to each other. Uh I just don't remember specifically what their names were. Theta, could you help me out with that? Nope, I literally told you at the beginning of the episode that I would be no good with names. It was my one anyway. caveat that I gave you. <laughs> so, uh, I think uh, my big takeaway from all that, though, was that uh, the gloves given in the flashbacks and memories end up being the gloves that end up being given between uh, Ayato and Haruka. Uh, and somehow we have our closed time like curve here to deal with. That's still my running prediction about the conspiracy of the oh, show. Oh right, you said somebody was someone's mother, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, just quick remind me. Uh, unrelated to that, I actually know. I just want you to remember. But I'm going to do this in the most difficult way possible, as I always do. Who was given the uh, the gift that turned uh, turned them? Into a horrible person for a little while. I think it was the doctor, but it or is the doctor also the same character as the one who the doctor like, was uh, the one that gave the gift? I'm asking who they yeah. gave it to. Uh I my initial response is going to be his wife, but I don't think that's true. You're I think it's just someone at work that they like a decent bit. You said his wife last time, too, so and I corrected you then. No. She joked it's about being his wife. No, it's, it's not actually just a co-worker. I'll correct you. It's his assistant. The one that drives him around everywhere. Jokes about uh, being in love with him constantly. Mm-hmm. At, at some point, it's not a joke, is what I'm going to say. At some point, that's not a joke anymore. Well, I don't know that we've actually seen any, like, romantic interest shown back from the Doctor. I mean, he did specifically give her, like, a poison necklace, as it were. <laughs> I that, that might make the relationship a little bit tougher now, but we'll have to see. So, that's all that I remember, Theta. Is there anything you would like to add to all that to uh, remember from last time or to look forward to this time? Well, I don't know what's coming, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, I actually forgot what's on the next time. <laughs> well, no, I said this at the very beginning, that um, I don't remember beat for beat what happens through most of these episodes. I know the overall beat. I know mm -hmm. who's doing what why they're doing it, their relationships to who. I just don't remember the episodic nature of each episode specifically. I yep. know what I'm waiting for, and I don't remember how... My problem with my memory about this whole series is that I think I was sick during a big part of watching it. <laughs> so I kind of had these like fever dreams of memories of things that aren't the major beats that I remember of what happened. Hey. Theta source for Razephon, everyone. He remembers it in a dream. No, I said fever dream. You can have a fever dream without dreaming. A fever dream is just some sort of, like, hallucinatory state of uh, mm -hmm. illness where you're conscious and watching something but not understanding what you're seeing. So let's see if we can bring that fever dream to reality. Let's go ahead and watch it. Uh, but before we get started, be sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some really excess stuff, you can check us out over on the Patreon. Just $5 a month, but no pressure. It's all to support the channel, just a little bit extra. Click that Discord link down below. Join us. Let us know what your favorite Super Robot uh, show is. All right, Griff, let us know what you're picking out from the intro. Uh, Naked Teenage Boys. Wait, mm -hmm. wrong thing to take away. I'm gonna clip that out. A lot of clocks still. I wonder if time has anything to do with this, or that broken battlefield.
I would think back to the conversation that Shy and I had during the Vinland Saga about things being metaphysical versus actually physical. The representation of imagery. Uh, well, I mean, of course, this whole thing is basically just metaphor. Is it? Could it be? I mean, when you really think about it, some of the shit that you're seeing on screen is actually very literal. And you wouldn't even know it. Like, I, 23 years, and it just took me a minute a long to realize something I just saw was indicating <laughs> something very heavily toward me. There's a character in a scene in the opening there, and her background is, like, exactly telling you who they are via mm -hmm. just the shit that's around them, and it's very literal. Like, a very literal interpretation. Well, yeah. we have, like, the Haruka and, like, the Salvador Dali painting, and I'm just like, no, I could totally believe that's actually literally physical in this show. <laughs> Yeah, it was like Christmas a second ago, now it's summer. <laughs> Man, what year does the show take place in again? 2023? Yeah, sounds about right. Small Shrine of Time. Ninth movement. That's where the uh, Master Sword is. She's such a jazzy, relaxing tone for this scene. He's going super singing. Nope. And he didn't do it. I didn't do it.君がここにいる意味はないな。そんな言い方。我々が君を連れ出すのに一体どれだけの犠牲を払ったか。Absolutely <笑> Oh, she seems fine. She's just working on the computer there. Sorry. Yeah, everything's back to normal. I'd like you to think of it as one. Ah, uh, man just wants to feel in charge. Ah, Secret Alien wants to go pilot the machine because it's cool. Damn, you live like this? I don't hear anything. <laughs> oh, they were uh, playing the radio there. Or like just the room books. Your very human name, of course. <laughs> Yeah, why is he responding to Olin here? <laughs> no one's called him that before. Yeah, it's like four days from Christmas. Perfect time to go to the beach. Well, you know, it's sweltering hot in the middle of the new year again, so...
Ah, pleasantly awkward. I will say, she never stops being awkward or weird, and I've never understood her, so... I know. It's okay. You can just be a weird person. That's that's perfectly fine. Well, at the moment, yeah. Ah, pull and rank. Man, were you really getting like three beach episodes in a row? No, it's only the second one. <laughs> oh, this is just chaos. <笑>あ、would be, but not. もう対戦前のことって覚えてるの作られたもので本当の記憶じゃないんだっていつきさんがそう言ってたでも今はそうでもあ、I'm I'm just trying to work time mechanics in my brain now. I feel like they just dropped like a good explanation. <laughs> eh, stuff you already know. Yeah. As I said, would be, but it's not, because that's not the way this works. Failed the password three times, though, and wasn't locked out. Mm-mm-mm. Terrible security. Oh. Yeah, you know, you get asked. That she wouldn't hurt you, though. Just a long scene of watching someone listen to music. Isn't that what every music video is? It kind of. Ah, dang, we didn't get to see the diving form. I was going to critique it. Well, you, did, you didn't see the vampire in that shot? <laughs> what? Right there. See, you're already missing the vampire. Ah! Just like the, uh, the pool scene all over again. Nishima! Nishima! That's right, you're hallucinating. But how could it be hallucinating if other people are seeing it? <laughs> These are good questions. I wish the show would tell me. I do appreciate it. You're still getting confounded by this. She She's a ghost, she teleports, she's an alien on a phase of time. I don't know, it could be anything. She died? I mean, how about that? Well, that was all his perception of what was going on at that time, like the first couple of episodes, because he believed it, she was a, a real physical person. You're saying that dead people? Aren't real physical people. Not anymore. <laughs> I'd argue that just because you're dead doesn't mean you're no longer physically a person. Well, maybe not the person <laughs> part. You're still physical. You've upgraded to object. Yeah, take that into account, Griff. 
Once you're dead, you become property of the state that you hate so much. <laughs> so I'm gonna launch my body into space, they can't get me there. I mean, international law, anybody could get you there. Yeah, being a weirdo with no past who stormed into your facility and starts making demands and giving orders, yeah, that's reason to be suspicious. Uh, oh, it is a ghost. This polycule that I'm developing. Yeah, this is a weird time for the love triangle. It's not really a triangle. They're most interested in him. So. The love line, I guess. Remind you of anyone? Maybe. Yeah, what's with the weird crypt nowhere here? <laughs> they did explain that they dug it up earlier, but um... They always hinted at early anime, hey, those doors are drawn in a different style than the background. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> I think this is slowly leading into my one of my many theories of Reika is actually the Razephon, or some representation of it. Who's Reika on again? Uh, the, the hallucination girl. The one in yellow. That's Mishima. Is it? Yeah, they were just calling her name out earlier when they were trying to find her. Huh. I tried taking notes and I got it wrong. <laughs> well, we no, have a bunch no of... We have a bunch of people looking for one another. I'm sure we'll get more called out names soon enough. I'm sure nobody would be stupid enough to wander into the ancient shrine recently on Earth. Yeah, <laughs> ここなんですよ、ここ。ここ。この祠、坂上隠しのあった場所だ。坂上隠し。そう。38年前、2人の女の子が突然現れた場所です。ああ、it's more ghost. <laughs> Easy guy。ただ不思議なのはね、そうした神隠しから<笑> And I think the reporter's actually hinting that uh, Ayato is going to be taken away by the Federation or something here. No, but seriously though, what would you know? What what does anyone know at this point? <laughs> I 
I've got a whole week passed by and I was just missing. Like, I feel like by formatting, I'm expecting the entire shrine to rise up as, like, an enemy dolan that has to be, like, fought or something. But right now, this is just plain mysterious. Dude, you've been walking for a week. Well, no, I mean, he could have been walking for like five minutes. It was all time fuckery, remember? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe my favorite dreams were just actually just the show. The egg is the cog wheel that turns time. Show makes sense. I mean, it makes sense to me now. I know it's critical, but show, please. Karate Pawn has chosen new pilots. Oh, uh, that's gonna be problematic. I mean, did you figure out the clue being given to you there? There's... There's a lot to unpack. There's a combination of what the, uh, the detective reporter guy said earlier and the imagery that you literally got five seconds of. Yeah, you know, I get songs stuck in my head like that, too. <laughs> Remember when your your watch attracts two different already period time periods already is out of sync because you've done it again. <laughs> Uh, what what a world where you're like, I need to get a third time watch. Yeah, I need a, I need a watch for Tokyo Jupiter, a watch for here, and another third watch just in case. Yeah. Bokuno 
Did, said many a lot on other shows. That's Who's, a, I feel like we need to use a, that clip specifically for when we finish a series or we drop a show. Oh, I thought it would get more interesting than it actually did. Oh gosh, yeah, just put that at the end of every high card episode. <laughs> なのしそうだね。はるか。だが。よかった。本当に彼のためになることなら。ああ、で、who's That part at least makes sense. <laughs> that's just that that's just regular spy operations. I can get that. So yeah, I mean I think this is like the second episode in a row now where major things have been thrown at you. I, I can tell that that was the most major possible plot things I could think of. But it doesn't combine to tell me what is is. Well, some of it is like far reaching like you might not have context for yet some of it was mm -hmm. uh episode uh, encapsulated like a bottle like a bottle episode almost that you yeah, should yeah. be able to figure it out just from this episode alone like we we got like name drop like Otl and Ixiel where Ixiel is apparently the mm -hmm. Razephon and or our mm -hmm. Hallucination girl. What was her name again? Mirmu. Sure. <laughs> Mary. That's not that, but I mean, sure. For your sake, let's go with that for right now. Well, well give it to me. I'm gonna write it down right I'm now. I'm pretty sure it's Mishima. Mishima. Let's let's see what happens next time first. I think it's about to end. Or am I completely misjudging, Lud? This is the end of the song, right? No, it, it just starts ending for a whole minute. It's about to end. Yeah, I mean, it's just like but he's uh, getting charged, remember? He's at a press conference, for God's sakes. Right. So they're calling Ayato Otl, and then... And then they go and talk together, and then they say, No, you're Otl now, and now this time egg is hatching, and that egg is the gear that turns time. What... What, what does that mean? <laughs> As I said before, there was a scene where the reporter guy said something very important, or... Seemed to be unrelated to anything in the moment. And then you saw a flashback of a thing. Yeah, it's like people get spirited away twice. Obviously, she's been to the shrine before. There was a blue-haired sister, which uh, we haven't seen. And then uh, she went back to the shrine this episode. So a lot of, a lot of stuff is happening. What does it mean, they? Well, like you said, you, you keep getting hit with, like, the one major thing, but you don't have any context for it, so you don't even, I guess, don't even realize it's a thing. I mean, I know you do, because you've mentioned it before, but yeah. you, you're not getting it right, so... <laughs> and I don't want to, like, keep prodding it, because I don't want you to... I, I'm in the uh, audience camp of I don't want you to get it right until it's said, because then it kind of spoils something. You want to just see me be wrong for longer, I understand. <laughs> well, it's not even I want you to see me wrong for longer, it's just that I'm I'm from that backseating perspective that the longer you don't understand it, or the longer it takes you to figure it out, the more rewarding or the bigger the payoff will be once it all hits. Mm -hmm. So, 
if you if you don't figure it out up until the show tells you right off flat to your face, which I don't think happens till the very end, yeah. um, then it's just that much more rewarding of a journey. I feel like I I definitely need to know more. I need to see more. I can't just let these weird mystery elements just like exist. I gotta solve this now. <laughs> so. I I think that's about all I can say for this. It I'm so confused and I'm so happy. So, <laughs> do you have any uh, final words before we go ahead and wrap up? No, because most of the stuff I have is stuff I don't or can't talk about, given spoilery nature and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So next time, mystery. Uh, this has been Stone Face Reactions, everybody. I'm Griffin. That's Theta, and we'll catch you next time. See you around. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stone Face Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?